There might be an even bigger problem with quantum gravity than I initially suspected, since it might turn out, frankly, that quantum mechanics might be incorrect and that Planck's constant might not represent a minimum of action, for example. Um, I've deduced this by um, calculating what the force of gravity is between two hydrogen atoms. The force of gravity between two hydrogen atoms using Newton's law of inverse inverse square law of gravitation is 1.86 times 10 to the minus 62 newton meters cubed. So that is tiny. That's a tiny, 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 tiny amount of force. However, it is amount. It is an amount of force. It is therefore an amount of action. It's, it's, an, it's an amount of energy, um, and it's it's trans Planckian. Right? It's lower than the Planck length or the Planck constant. Right. So um, yeah. This um throws quantum mechanics <coughs> somewhat into well new territory, let's say. It doesn't throw it into disrepute necessarily, since we tend to think of um, Planck length as the lowest length scale at which we can meaningfully measure anything. However, I'd have conjectured that naked singularities exist so that we can have infinitesimals of volume as opposed to thinking about nature as being pixelated into Planck lengths or anything like this. Um, I would have said that yeah, we, we can have an infinitesimal of volume and that really the background is a, a sort of a sea of tunneling electrons. Um, those may be about a Planck length on average apart from one another. Um, in Well, they probably wouldn't be actually since their densities would vary over space. But yeah, I mean, they might be really rather close to one another. Um, there may be Planck lengths between other particles in nature, such as neutrinos flowing through the background electron fields. But um, yeah, nonetheless, I think what, what obviously, 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 what quantum gravity was going to call on us to do is, in the first instance, very clearly give a major re overhaul to general relativity and majorly update re general relativity with quantum ideas, with quantum assumptions. But more unexpectedly, it's, going, it's challenging quantum theory. It's challenging quantum ideas such as the exponential functions of electron wave functions. All that's got to be softened up to allow for electrons to very occasionally tunnel to macroscopic length scales or macroscopic distances. So you need very occasionally for an electron from the Earth to be able to tunnel to an atom inside the Moon and exert a force of gravity, or exert a force of electrostatic attraction over the protons in the Moon to, to lead to gravity, if you see what I mean. But this isn't allowed currently under the equations for quantum mechanics. So yeah, on various levels, quantum mechanics is wrong. Or I predict that quantum mechanics very probably is wrong on many different levels. And the, this is one of them, this idea of um, Planck's constant being, um, yeah, well, a fundamental constant of nature. It might not be a fundamental constant of nature. It might work very well to predict, for instance, the frequencies and wavelengths of light um, or the energy of light um, at low energies. I think that it might yeah, give us a good idea of energy quanta when energy are quanta, if you see what I mean. However, this is what Stephen Hawking discovered in his own Transplankian problem when it comes to black hole event horizons. He found that um, the energy quanta were becoming infinite in terms of their frequency. And really what I think is going on there is that you just got some, some huge agglomeration of gamma radiation sur surrounding black hole event horizons. So, and because of Bose-Einstein statistics, you know, the, the, the photon is not really a photon anymore as such. It's just a kind of photon fluid. That's really what's surrounding black hole event horizons. And um, it's not really, yeah, like discretized anymore. It's not really quantized anymore, quantizable. It's, um, it's more just like a swirling, mass of um, a continuum really if you like of a, of a fluid it is a it's a hydrodynamic mass of um, energy and likewise the electron densities surrounding black holes those are well they're moving at the speed of light because the black holes rotate at the speed of light 
and um, they're swirling around and um, they're kind of a, a mass of just moving energy more or less I mean, you can you can think of it in terms of individual electrons still even at the speed of light I guess and you can sort of think of um, the photons as individuated photons it depends like you know whether or not you want to end your electromagnetic spectrum at a certain value and just say you know this is the value of the largest uh, or the most energetic gamma ray photon that you, you can have but I mean in reality that that just keeps going that keeps going into we don't know what it's just that at some point because people had tested all the gamma sources on earth right um, found the highest energy gamma source and the lowest energy radio wave at a given time and um, just called that the electromagnetic spectrum whereas the electromagnetic spectrum is probably wider than that um, and goes on you know beyond the limits that we put on it but it goes into sort of like yeah condensed matter or photon fluid field and things like that um, or quark gluon plasmas and you know well which I mean would contain I consider gluons photons <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> this is another unpopular idea of mine but um yeah in doing all this stuff like I hate to getting that paper rejected from nature I don't care really well I do care I do care because I want I thought I was saying something really interesting in it. I think I did say something really interesting in it. But they're saying like this is this is transplankian gobbledygook or something. This is this is nonsense. It's like, well I I did use Newton's law. Those are the numbers that come out of it. Yes, the the gravity between two quantum objects, i.e. atoms it is deeply transplankian. That's sort of the problem with, that's like the essence of the problem with quantum gravity. And, you know, using electron densities to explain that, like, why is that so controversial anyway? <laughs> why is it so controversial anyway? That, well, it kind of dispenses with the whole idea of space time. Well, it doesn't really, because the space time would be formed of an electron density, and the quantum of the space time would be the electron. I guess, or it would be the pseudo Nambu Goldstone boson of the gravitational force, or what have you. And gravity wouldn't really be a fundamental interaction at all. It would be a. Well, actually, it would be a sort of fundamental interaction if it occurs between atoms, I suppose. But it'd be really more of a secondary effect of electromagnetism. Something adjoined to electromagnetism, something united with electromagnetism, or a facet of electromagnetism. That's really what I've been saying. But, um, yeah, like, quantum mechanics, it is still a theory that's over a hundred years old, like general relativity is over a hundred years old. We can't keep lining up these sacred cows of theories from the past to quantum mechanics, general relativity, and all this sort of stuff when we're in the 21st century. Have we not moved beyond that stuff? I mean, I know we have with string theory and loop quantum gravity and these various ideas and um, quantum field theory, obviously. And um, now there's more 21st century notions coming through like causal dynamical triangulations and causal fermion systems, both of which I'm a huge fan of. Um, and all sorts of other stuff is coming out to the fore now. And we've had a second quantum revolution based on work that was done in the 60s and 70s by John Clauser, Alan Aspect and the other dudes. But this is, is vexing, you know, it's vexing to me. Because you think like, oh, Planck's constant, I have to get rid of Planck's constant. I guess we don't have to get rid of Planck's constant since it still works as for low energy solutions. It just doesn't work in very, very high energy domains, such as um, black hole event horizons, if you see what I mean, or it is not relevant there, or it loses relevance there, and there's transplankianism as well, 
and that's deeply important in quantum gravity. And likewise, also, there are naked singularities, I suspect, in nature that are really, I see, because of um, electrons in the background, these tunneling electrons in the background that I describe my idea of a gravitational field, um, those form naked singularities constantly whenever they interact with the photon. Then via the uncertainty principle, they change their, their momentum. They, they, um, they travel faster than the speed of light to a different location, pop up in a different location and emit the photon that they've absorbed. That's what I, I've been saying. And um, it's, you get yeah, stochastic elements to this all, like B.L. Hu's stochastic model of gravity which you know no one knows about everyone still bleats on about general relativity and, and even the string theory and so on but you know forgets poor old bl who who's come up with a really rather sharper more deeper more refined more elegant idea <laughs> than than anyone you know like, like that really and Einstein he's putting out to pasture I think we've got to stop lining up Einstein and Dirac and Schrodinger and all these sacred cows of ours from the 1920s and 1930s he has to take a big sledgehammer or a, a surgeon's scalpel to their work and see where exactly it's been going wrong and been misleading us and come to something well that yet yeah, is transplankian and that's simpler and easier to understand and I think that is possible I think that's very possible I think it's very doable within a generation or two and um, I think quantum gravity really can be solved but but with you know the way it won't be solved is by taking everything as gospel if you know what I mean, it won't be solved by saying that no, all this is true, as it could even be well tested, it's all true, it's all true, true, true. Like we can't question any of it, right? That's not going to be the way that we'll end up solving it. The way that we'll end up solving it is saying, like, we need a new theory to explain da -da -da, that these theories don't explain. And they're at least incomplete. And on varying levels, I hate to say I think they're wrong. And that, you know, well, Planck length being the shortest measurable length. If naked singularities exist, then it's not the shortest measurable length, is it? The shortest measurable length is an infinitesimal of length. Since uh, a naked singularity would have to exist in an infinitesimal of volume and not a Planck length or Planck volume. If, if you wanted a, a singularity, a true singularity, to exist in a Planck volume, you'd have to stuff an infinite amount of mass into it, which obviously we can't do. Um, if you want to, it's the size apparently of the smallest possible black hole, the Planck length, which maybe it is even, and maybe we have to keep the Planck length around for that reason and for these sorts of things, but sideline it, I'd say, and come up, try and find a new constant for the minimum of action. Yeah, that's what it's not. It's not the it's not the constant of action, or it's not the smallest amount of action that you can have in a system. Clearly, since forces such as one point eight six times ten to the minus sixty two newton meters cubed, like that is a lot smaller than the Planck length. It's far smaller, far subtler, and yeah, a, a deeply yeah more mysterious force. And that's gravitation. And um, quantum mechanics has been butting its head against it since its inception, really. And why should it be any surprise if you've got a constant that purports to be the constant of action or the smallest possible amount of action you can have in nature? It's no surprise, really, is it? Is it? And, you know, everyone just takes his doctrine, gospel, to do 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 there's no, 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 nothing can be smaller than the Planck length. It is the, that is the quantum of action. Like, but gravity, though, and hydrogen atoms, like, uh, well, well, general relativity might explain that, but quantum mechanics explains this. And we've got two different theories with two different things. But then we want another theory that integrates the two of them. 
So these sorts of issues come out of that. Yeah, quantum mechanics is probably wrong as well as general relativity clearly being incomplete or frankly wrong also, as I've said in other videos. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the world we're living in in physics. See you soon. Bye.